why does a plane fly or how does a plane fly now i'm quite certain many of you already know the answer but all of you must be wondering what is the connection of this question with today's video or spirituality or your career well i'll come to that just in a bit because by the end of the video i would have not only unraveled the mystery but you'll find the relevance of this question with what we are talking about today so welcome to another episode of career attainment and my name is vikram limse today's video is from my playlist spirituality for the business executive now for those of you who've seen an earlier video in the same playlist will remember that we had established why spirituality was very important for your career in whatever you did whether as an entrepreneur or as a professional manager or even as a student it was important we established to gain some knowledge about spirituality which is essentially about yourself to succeed along with the other knowledge that we are gaining and you'll also remember that in that video we had said that as we progress through the playlist we will try to attempt a very business like academic rational or intellectual definition of spirituality that is appreciated by all of us because after all we are business executives and we are used to taking in and processing information in a particular manner which appeals to our intellect in a rational manner so that's what i'm trying to do today in this video where i am saying spirituality is a science for success and we will attempt an academic definition of what is spirituality today so for the sake of continuity i request you to even watch that earlier video for those of you who haven't and also watch the following videos that we will put in this playlist going forward and do not miss watching this entire video fully and watch it with concentration because then you will be able to appreciate it's it's great fun to learn about uh, spirituality in a academic and general manner and i promise you it's going to be of great benefit to you so thank you for watching uh, the channel liking sharing and subscribing and encouraging me so coming back to this question why does an aeroplane fly what is a plane after all it's it's technology it's engineering it's a, it's an equipment or a gadget which progresses or flies because of the laws of science physics or specifically fluid mechanics or you want to get even more specific than the application of bernoulli's theorem where it says that the pressure at the bottom of the wing tip wings is higher than the uh, pressure at the top of the wings because of which it gets a lift and that's how the plane flies what i'm trying to say is that we appreciate the science of physics or the theorems and principles when we see it in application in our day to day life like in the case of this aircraft or the plane right or for example what will happen if i say that if a compound of potassium chlorate is brought in close proximity with phosphorus or sulfur it releases a free molecule of oxygen which is highly inflammable and combustible this is science of chemistry but what does it mean to us till we see a simple application like this a matchstick it's an equipment right what is happening is a compound of potassium chlorate is coming in touch with sulfur and the friction is producing heat which is lighting up oxygen and that's how it burns in fact in this covid times this uh, uh, this uh, manufacturing of industrial or medical oxygen also follows complex chemical science or chemistry science of chemistry but again we appreciate this science when we see its application in this simple things like a matchstick or an oxygen concentrator or take that funny story of the greek mathematician archimedes who ran out naked from his bathtub shouting eureka eureka right you remember that now that would have just remained a funny story if you had not connected it with the practical application in the shipping industry after all is the same laws of buoyancy which apply to the shipping industry half of the world supply chain happens because of sea freight and these huge super tanker ships and tankers and freighters are loaded with tons and tons and tons of cargo on the same principle you remember that plimsoll line which is drawn around the hull right you load the ship more and more and if the water level goes beyond or above the line then there's a fear of the ship sinking because of the displacement laws right 
what I'm trying to say simply is that any science in pure science is appreciated the theorems the principles when you see it in application in technology or some equipment or a gadget which solves a day-to-day -day problem or conversely any gadget or an equipment or technology which solves a day-to-day -day problem is based on the sound foundation of science any pure science biology physics even management is a science nowadays right now so any pure science has a partner in technology which allows it to make it into an applied science and that brings us to the first myth about spirituality or an obstruction which does not allow us to understand or define spirituality in a manner that appeals to us so what is the first myth that spirituality is not a science so therefore can't be defined it's just some esoteric philosophy or something like that nothing can be far away from that because if you agree that your body, which is the most supreme example of any equipment, better than anything else in the world, and this entire universe which functions around us is nothing but technology or uh, 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 gadgets or equipment, then what does it work on other than some science? And that science is spirituality. So in fact, spirituality is also a higher science. Maybe people don't understand it. Very few people understand it. So therefore, uh, you know, rather than claiming that, oh, it's such a difficult science, let me not study it. We just, you know, arbitrarily say that, okay, no, it's something, uh, something philosophical or some story or something like that. It's not science. So let me focus on science. But nothing can be far away. There's, it's a much higher science than any other pure science that we see. In fact, the scientists also look the same. Who are the scientists in the spiritual science who are converting into an applied science or this saints and gurus etc who do these major vedic practices in the himalayas etc or anywhere else in fact if you take the picture of an einstein or any guru they even look the same like the hair and beard and everything the process is also similar because in pure science what is the process you make an assumption or a postulate and then keep doing experiments 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 and then you write down the value and at the end of the day come up with some constant and then you make it into a law Quite the same happens when it comes to spirituality as a science, when you take it as a science. Somebody makes a postulate. Only thing is that it happens over years, thousands of years and generations. Somebody makes a postulate or a hypothesis and then there are so many spiritual scientists and these saints and gurus who keep doing experiments on their own body for years together and keep writing these values. And what are these values? And they arrive at a certain law at the end of the day and what is that that is your scripture same process it's just that in pure sciences or objective sciences these guys have you know ego so they write their names you know charles laws phillips laws Boyle's laws this law that law in spiritual science these guys are so evolved that they don't even bother writing their names do you even know who wrote the vedas or the various Upanishads and so on and so forth there are so many scripts we don't even know who wrote them there are some great scientists so spiritualism is the operating system of everything about our body that's what it is if you want to talk in the modern digital world is the script and this is the front end our body is the front end the entire universe is the front end and spirituality is the script behind that's what it is so it's a pure science so let's dispel that myth completely that's the first so that we are able to then define and understand spirituality the second misunderstanding or the obstruction in the way of understanding spirituality is because of the english language or the modern language of education it falls way short of actually defining what spirituality is and in a generalistic world it starts comparing it with religion but there's no point confusing religion with spirituality. They're far apart. Religion is nothing but a, you know, a codified list of some philosophical injunctions or some ritualistic practices, uh, you know, made by a certain cultural set of people and they're different for different parts of uh, the universe. So there are different types of religion. But spirituality is one. So the other myth is, you know, spirituality equal to religion because of the limitations of language. In fact, if you really think about our Indic languages, then 
there is no uh, the words that they use over there which is sanatan sanatan dharma adhyatma they don't have any equivalence in modern languages they fall very adequately short so therefore you just use a general broad based word called religion and the problem with this broad based word called religion is is that it's very limited in its scope so therefore you say that okay spirituality is also very limited in its scope so you ignore it so that's the second problem the third obstruction in the root of understanding spirituality is about the objective of spirituality like in pure sciences when it is applied to some technology the objectives are very clear there is a functional objective and then there is a emotional objective for example uh, let's say a watch yeah or a car or a refrigerator there is a functional objective in this watch it right? shows time and then there is an emotional objective it makes us happy the same thing actually applies even to spirituality there is a clear distinct functional objective and then there is a clear distinct emotional objective the functional objective of course is something very complex how to overcome your ego like how you are in a watch you are overcoming a problem of how to show time there you are overcoming a problem of how to overcome your ego so that's your functional objective and then there is the emotional objective also same it's about happiness only thing is the happiness is when you what you get from pure sciences and its applied versions is different from spiritual sciences and its applied version that happiness is very temporary like from the same thing i get a different happiness you get a different happiness from the same thing the happiness today and the happiness tomorrow is different right so it's not constant but the happiness the emotional objective of happiness that is fulfilled by the spiritual science and its application one of its application is yoga is pure happiness it's constant happiness so understand that that also spirituality also has a functional and a emotional objective that it achieves the fourth obstruction in understanding spirituality correctly in my view is because we don't understand or haven't seen the manufacturing process of our body with our own eyes it's impossible right you can't see your own body being manufactured because it is it comes into being inside your mother's womb unlike in pure sciences and application where you put one thing with the other and mix it up and together this that steel coal this that everything and you know there's some technology whereas actually the same thing is happening over here we'll come to that in later uh, videos as to how is the makeup of our body but quite honestly the obstruction is because we don't fathom what the manufacturing and the makeup of our body is that obstructs us from appreciating spirituality and therefore we don't concentrate and last and finally in any other equipment or gadget you know that you need to plug it in to get some energy so the source of energy is clear but the source of energy in our body we don't physically plug in right you plug physically plug in a fan or a ac or a bulb and then you are able to intellectually fathom the expanse of electricity behind and the distribution network electric wires transformers transmission stations dams nuclear power plants thermal power plants etc there's a intellectual appreciation of what can be behind when you plug in that small little bulb bulb or a fan but you don't plug in your physical body anywhere but this also requires energy but this plugging in happens in a in a very very advanced wifi manner which the world has not even discovered in your deep sleep state when you are actually sleeping you are wirelessly plugged in to spiritual energy because at the end of the day what is it it's your the body is nothing but a bundle of energies there's electron protons and neutrons moving at a very very fast speed just like how the energy is there out in the universe the whole objective is to align that energy which is available outside with the energy which is available inside and how does that happen when deep sleep you are actually plugged in wirelessly and therefore the transition of that energy happens and you feel very refreshed and then you dissipate it through the day by talking walking doing various things right so it's as scientific as that but you don't appreciate it because there's no physical plugging in happens and therefore you don't appreciate spirituality 
So these are the four or five myths which go into you staying away from spirituality. And if you understand these and do your own research, you'll understand what are these five. The first thing is that spirituality is also a science. So no need to dispel it as some philosophy. Second is don't be over uh, uh, what do you call, uh, don't be misled by the limitation of language. Spirituality is not religion. Religion is limited. So therefore, don't apply it to spirituality. Spirituality is not limited. It's something really vast. The third thing is that the objective of spirituality is similar to any other science. It gives you functional benefits and some emotional objectives that you can achieve. Fourth, the manufacturing process of all your own human body also is quite similar to the way you manufacture various other gadgets, equipments and technology. Appreciate that and then you will be able to appreciate spirituality. And finally, spirituality also requires some plugging in of energy. Just because you don't see it physically it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So understand the concept of aligning the supreme energy with the energy of your body, which allows you to function as a day to day. If you understand these four or five obstructions and think about them, then you will start appreciating spirituality correctly. So what is the exact definition or try to attempt a definition of spirituality? While pure sciences deals with the observed universe, Spiritual science deals with the unobserved universe. Spirituality is a science that deals with understanding the unobservable operating system of an individual and the universe around us and aligning both of them so that you can function very efficiently in your day-to-day -day life. I hope you've appreciated this video and it is helpful. Do your own research and if you found something new, please share with me because it's going to be immensely important for all of us to understand ourselves and which will lead us to achieving success in our careers. Thank you again. Bye for now. Cheers. <music>